So it's very likely that we don't hear anything about Nintendo Switch 2 officially until next year. I know Nintendo did not slam the door shut on a reveal this year. In fact, it's still set to be revealed this fiscal year, which goes all the way through March 31st of 2025. But there is more months left in the fiscal year next year than there is right now. We're in November, so we have November. Uh, we're about halfway through that. We have December. And then there's literally three full months next year. So it is just statistically highly more likely that Switch 2 is revealed next year. And I just, with no financial meeting like on the horizon in 2024 or anything else, I don't think Nintendo's like going to give us anything else. They may, and they definitely could. And when we have companies like, you know, Playtonic Games out there doing Yuka Re play e pay e whatever uh stuff going out there where they're basically teasing their games coming to switch to i can understand why some people hold out hope again nintendo did not slam the door shut uh they did say that you know they would have a very minor if any impact on switch sales if and when they reveal it so i look i I think it's fair to say that the only way we're going to get any information or news about Switch 2 the rest of this year is probably through the rumor or leak mill. And today we have a brand new rumor for you that I wasn't going to cover initially, but the more I thought about it and the more I sat on uh, my hands just contemplating the entire concept behind this rumor, the more I actually think this makes sense, especially because Nintendo's under new leadership. And this isn't exactly unheard of on other platforms that have offered something similar. However, I think this is going to be a very unique situation for this particular feature for Nintendo Switch 2. Also, it does come from somebody who did have some, a game that recently came out correct. He was, you know, the lead source on saying this game even existed and was coming. So there is that. So there's at least a little credence, but this person's also had some things wrong in the past as well. So I just want to note, we are treating this as a rumor. You absolutely should not believe it. It should just be a nice thought exercise. And then we wait and see if it becomes reality. Now, before we dive into this rumor on Switch 2, I want to remind you we are on our road to 140,000 subscribers. So you want to stay up to date on all things Switch 2 and Nintendo, go ahead and subscribe right here. Uh, we may even have another video for you uh, before our live stream tonight, but we'll wait and see on that. There's a, a lot of stuff going on. Nintendo's starting to announce their Black Friday sales, but we'll dive into that in another video. So first, let's head on over to Twitter slash X here. And here we have good old Nash Weedle. As I said, Nash Weedle has gotten a lot of things uh, wrong. Uh, he's also gotten some things right. And Mario and Luigi was one of those things that he was the lead source on that game, even existing, let alone coming out. So he put out this tweet and we're using the uh, translate by Google here. Uh, and I, I got a really good idea how this could work if it is real. So it says, Leak Express, Nintendo Switch 2 has a performance selector for portable mode from its own menu. So prioritizing battery or power. So battery life, or obviously just make the system more powerful. This is what a developer has shared with some colleagues along with other details about the development kit. It seems that Nintendo wants to avoid the multiple graphic options of the games and simplify it with few options that we pre-configure on the console. Uh, this person goes on to ask them, you know, I hope not. It's already tiring to choose modes on current consoles. Imagine on Switch 2. And then he comes in and says, you set it in the console settings and forget about it. It's practical. Now, initially, I thought this was kind of weird because Nintendo uh, has things for developers in handheld mode on the Switch. Three different power modes, I believe. I don't remember the exact uh, megahertz and stuff, but it just changes the clock speeds that they could choose from. And obviously, the higher clock speed you go with, the less battery life you have. But that's a choice by developers, not for us fans. Uh, so the question has always been, you know, if they're going to do something like this and make it on the consumer side, because he's making it sound like it's on the consumer side, you know, consumers probably don't want it to be exactly like PCs. The Steam Deck and other handheld PCs also have a lot of options you can choose for your performance and prioritizing battery life over uh, actual performance of the system. And then when you look at PlayStation 5, uh, there's already like settings in there, like quality settings, performance settings. Usually all this uses the same amount of power draw from what I understand, but it just changes where that power is being used. So maybe the power is going more towards frame rates. Other things are going more towards graphics and anti-aliasing and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, that's fine, but that's, I don't think, what we're talking about here. Because if we go back to this and you look at what he actually said, uh, it looks like he's talking about handheld mode. So it says, this is a performance selector for portable mode. Uh, and when I think about that, the thing that comes to my mind, the only other device that I've ever gamed on that seems to have a difference in portable mode and uh, being plugged in 
are gaming laptops. Uh, gaming laptops, notoriously, if you unplug them from power, really drop the performance of their hardware to give you more battery life out of it when you're gaming. But if you plug it back in, it boosts the performance, uh, and then you get a better gaming experience. However, on PCs, you can override those settings that lead to them using lower settings, lowering the screen brightness, lowering all the clock speeds, and keep them at the same speeds as when they're plugged in, you would just get lower battery mode so my thought here is and again this is just a rumor you definitely shouldn't put a ton of stock into it but my thought is if this is real what they are giving the consumers a choice is to play docked mode in handheld remember it is rumored that this system has a 1080p screen and for 1080p gaming maybe people want the performance of games in docked mode but they want it in the handheld and remember there's this prototype we saw ages ago uh, that's from october of 2023 that has a USB C port on the top and bottom so this just makes it even more likely that many people will use their handheld while plugged in uh, people will use tv mode on their you know counters and tables while plugged in so you will have that additional power coming in but also i do think that setting aside that feature set what this does is it takes something that probably runs two to two and a half hours on battery down to maybe an hour but you get maximum performance and it wouldn't be that games wouldn't have to develop develop for both modes like let's say the new call of duty black ops 6 comes to the platform right it would clearly have to run in handheld mode and run in docked mode but what if the consumer can choose in handheld mode to have docked mode performance at 1080p and that could be something that gamers want to take advantage of and would purposely choose, especially if they're not that far from an outlet anyways and don't mind laying in bed and plugging in their system into a wall should they choose to. I do feel like all this is is just additional options. Now, it's a very un-Nintendo-like thing because it adds an extra complication that like you'd have to remember to toggle that setting off if you're in an area like, say, on an airplane where maybe you don't have access to an outlet. A lot of airplanes you do, but some you maybe don't or you're you know on a transit in an Uber or something and you don't have obviously you know remembering to turn that setting off to maximize your battery life or keep a battery bank on you uh is sort of a minor inconvenience but i do think this does show that nintendo cares about this being a gaming first device so if this is real i'm not actually opposed to a toggle that lets you use dot mode in handheld mode because that would give you obviously the best performance possible while well, handheld gaming and if the system's capable of that while maintaining the heat output at a level that it's still not uncomfortable to hold in your hand i'm not really opposed to this it also makes me think they might be using vapor chamber cooling uh, because that's one way that they can get some extra cooling in the system to make it more palatable to run handheld settings or sorry docked settings in handheld so uh, that to me uh, this doesn't seem like as crazy of India I do think it's going to be turned off by default I think if this does exist when you buy the platform it's, it's not going to be turned on uh, but being able to go into the settings and flip a little toggle and turn that on I think is going to make a lot of people very happy with their Nintendo Switch too even if it becomes common to carry around like battery banks like this uh, 20,000 or 25,000 whatever milliamp hour anchor battery bank we have here even if that becomes a more common thing that people do uh, to keep their switch powered to get max performance out of it I don't think I actually I think that's kind of a fair trade-off if I'm completely honest so uh, again this is just a rumor and of all the rumors to me it's a really exciting one it's also very un Nintendo like but then when we consider that other consoles offer different performance modes Nintendo clearly has a two use case situation in handheld and in docked and being able to unify that optionally uh, with the end user having that option like let's say you play it in handheld mode and you just find man the frame rate's too choppy or you know like, like think about think about it for a moment think about you're, you're playing Mario and Luigi Brothership like right now and the frame rate's just ah, it's a little choppy in handheld flip the toggle now it's running in docked mode and suddenly the frame rate problems go away wouldn't that be something that would just be nice to have as an end consumer this doesn't mean i don't want companies to optimize properly for handheld mode for maximum battery life what it is telling me though is that some companies don't always do that and it just would be nice for the user to have that option to get better performance when on the go again as an option i don't think this is a bad thing i think laptops have had this pcs obviously have this i'm i'm not opposed to this being a thing they just have to simplify it it can't be it can't be like pc settings where you can go in and toggle every little individual megahertz of it and all the little settings as much as i like tinkering with stuff like that the end consumer wants simplicity nothing more simple than simply a toggle that's docked mode and handheld
Whatever they decide to call it, right? Power boost mode, right? Whatever they decide to use. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. And as always, I will catch each one of you in the next video.